Hi, my name is Todd Twala. I'm co-founder of Umoja with Tembinyandeni. My lifetime partner, we met when we were teens at school in 1968 and we're still friends till today. And then what happened is, I'll just be brief. I used to be a very successful dancer. I did a lot of big promotion, uh, productions in South Africa. The biggest I did was Ipintombi, which ran for many years and I was in it for as long as I can remember. And then we went to America in 1979. When I came back, when we came back in 1983, there was a lot of kids roaming around the streets with nothing to do. And some of them, most of them were in, in town sniffing glue and it didn't sit right with me. So as a fellow citizen and a mother at the same time, I felt, let me do something about it. That's when me and Tim, we decided, no, Let's start an a outreach program because we had money. We made money when we came back from America. Because our, you know, our peers, when we came back from, South, from America, they, most of them, they bought houses, big cars, but we felt there's more to life than a big car and a big house. And I'm glad we did that. So we took all the money that we have accomplished all in, in Epidombi and all the tours that we did. Then we started hiring out recreation centers, taking these kids off the streets from prostitution, from drugs, sniffing, glue, and hijacking, and all these de you know, negative things that the kids were up to. Because when kids are bored, they'll find something to do, you know? Especially when you're from the neighborhood where I come from, you know, disadvantaged communities, where nobody cares or tells you what to do, you know, give you a hope. So in a way, we were just wanted to give them a sense of hope, you know, and just give them another chance because, you know, a child is a child. We need to give them chances, you know, and guide them in the first place. So what happened is the project started with few kids. It was an outreach program in 1983. We started with few kids and every week there will be more kids because they started inviting each other and say, you know, Sister Tot and Sister we are doing this pro dance classes. Come, let's go. They give us food. They give us this. We funded this project with Tim before so long. It was a process. Then we ran out of money as time goes on. But we, fortunately, we're still young then. We would go, I would go and work, Tembi works. Then we come back and continue with the project. Until 1980, 1998, when our, our, our agent, Morris Fresco, said to me and Tim, you know guys, you are not honest to yourself, you are not fair to yourselves because you're spending your money on these kids, you're spending your time grooming them, training them, and for what? Because other productions are taking these kids and using them for their own good and it's yours blood and sweat and tears you know why don't you start your own production that's how we started with umoja 1999 and then we wanted to register the name of the production we called it baobab which is a name that brahu gave me and he says we are so strong like baobab trees it was so funny you know anyway it's another story one day i'll tell you so we called ourselves Baobab. When Morris Fresco called, went to re register the production, they said, no, 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 there's too many Baobabs. Then he came back, he said, girls, what can we call this, your show, whatever it is that you're going to be doing? We says, anyway, we find now, Gumoja, because it's Gumoja, Gumoja, it's, it's a slang we use in Soviet, you know. When something is good, it's, it's fine. We say Gumoja. Sometimes when ask, somebody asks you in Soviet and say, Gunja and it's your man, you say, Ay, Gumoja. So we said, it, it's, it's Gumoja, manje. Everything is come together. So now we had to come with the theme of the show. We had to come with the, you know, the story. And me coming from, me and Tim coming from the backgrounds that we come from, you know, from disadvantaged communities, we thought, no, man, let's, let's do something relevant. Actually, we wanted to do something about family values. Until one day we were sitting, not long, just before we 
because we're still tossing around you know ideas of what can we call this project because we've got dancers we've got music we've got about 100 songs but now we have to put this thing together so we were sitting watching a, a program this music program of the youth programs so they were asking this kid who's the singer who's who, what's the song she didn't know who was singing the song and it was donovan no uh, you know donovan singing and Uton Lak singing and i was so hurt because i said these kids don't understand they don't know their music they don't know their musicians and they, when they were asking about the American singer, the child just went, the other child just went, yeah, 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 so and so. And they saw, I thought, no, they know American singers, but they don't know South African singers. That's where the idea came from. Then we said, no, let's do something about South African music and celebrate it at the same time. Because in South African, our music is all what we had, you know, during apartheid times. Because we could sing when we are sad, we sing when we are happy. That's all what they couldn't take from us, you know. So that's where the theme of the sh uh, show came from. So we started now researching and writing the story. How can we start it? And it came together because we had songs, we had everything, dances and all. It was just a matter of time, to, just a matter of putting it together into perspective. So we did that and the show was done. And Umoja was launched at the market, the, at the Victory Theatre, actually, in '99, yes, we launched the show with Maurice Frisco. We ran the show, but Maurice Frisco ran out of money. Then we got Terry Dempsey, who was our publisher. He went, he introduced us to Joe Theron because Joe Theron was Terry's friend, and we recorded the, the music of the show at Joe Theron's uh, Sting Music. That's how we came to Joe Theron, became Joe Theron, joined us, and Morris left us, and Joe invested in the show. He says, guys, this show is too nice. Let's take it to America, we went to London. But unfortunately, we didn't have money then. So Joe invested a lot of money, more than 11 million in the show. He sold his house, sold his businesses for us to go and launch the show in London in 2001 in West, West End. And the show, we launched it, it was a bomb. It just exploded until today. We've, we haven't stopped. The show is still running. We've trained so many kids, I can't, they, I can't even count them. There are so many kids that have gone through Umoja. Most of them are now doing their own productions from the knowledge that they, we have imparted with them. And some of them have become solo artists, successful artists. Some of them have gone back to school. Some of them are business people today. Some of them went back to the streets. You know, it's not everybody wins. Some of them, most of them, but are good success stories because when we started the project, the kids were from disadvantaged communities and disadvantaged kids. But now, after 1994, after our de democracy in South Africa, the youth of South Africa have opportunities plenty. It's up to them to grab them. So now that's why when you have to join Umoja, I want a metric certificate because now these kids, they run away from the school. They want to come and join Umoja because they don't want to go to school. So what we do, you have to have your metric, then you can come and join Umoja. Lovely.